Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for cannabis. Stop arresting patients! Stop arresting patients! Stop arresting patients! Welcome to CMMNJ TV. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. The mission of our organization is to educate the public about the benefits of marijuana. Marijuana is a safe, effective, and inexpensive therapeutic agent for a wide variety of diseases, symptoms, and conditions. No patient should suffer needlessly without it, and no patient should ever go to jail for following the advice of a doctor. Join us and learn more about the exciting science of medical marijuana. Welcome to CMMNJ TV. I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. I'm here in the Princeton Community TV studio today with Randy Thompson, a campaign organizer with Help Not Handcuffs. Hi, Thank Ken. Hi, Randy. Thank you so much for coming to Princeton today. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, what is camp Help Not Handcuffs? Tell us about this and why, how are you a campaign organizer with that? Sure. So, uh, late September of last year, we coalesced, it was uh, pretty much a community group, and we were a little fed up with seeing, uh, you know, a lot of policies come out that are purportedly reforms of the system that really are tweaking the war on drugs and not moving away from the war on drugs. Meanwhile, people who, you know, actually have a substance use disorder can't get the help they need, and meanwhile, we're still going around reinforcing failed criminalization policy. So that was really, the broad policy that was kind of bringing us together and making us say, you know what, we're sick of our friends and family members not being able to get help, you know, whether it's treatment, support, housing, any of these re recovery support services that they need when they ask for help, but yet we have all this investment on the criminalization side and that's really harming a lot of our, our loved ones as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, do you consider one of the failed uh, policies, for example, drug courts? Uh, you know, uh, some people consider this a, a reform of, you know, it's better than sending people who have addiction problems into prison, uh, but on the other hand, it's also forcing them into treatment when they may or may not be ready for treatment or may not want treatment. You know? It's really a, a great irony because what you have, first of all, if someone has a valid substance use disorder, um, treatment may or may not be appropriate for them. So, so person A, person B, they're both addicted to the same thing even. Person A may only need a self-help group and now you force them into a treatment setting. That could actually have a negative outcome mm -hmm. for their own health uh, progress. But in the state of New Jersey, uh, speaking just about treatment, there's a huge deficit. 31,000 people could not get treatment when they asked for it in 2012. So ironically, now we're going to take people who don't even want it and force them into it. Meanwhile, the people who are asking yeah. for it willingly, and this is right. with the knowledge that when someone wants treatment and wants to recover, they have a two-time better outcome. You know, the Governor Christie has uh, has said that uh, the the war on drugs is a failure, and yet and yet he continues to want to criminalize uh, uh, marijuana, for example, and 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 which results in twenty one thousand arrests in New Jersey for possession alone, uh, and yet he recognizes that that's a failure. So. Yes. Why do we continue to pump more and more resources into what we know to be a failed approach to this issue? You know, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I know when I spoke to, you know, elected officials, I, I mean, the two things that I see is the war on drugs operates on two pillars, fear and shame. We will tell you things that, you know, this is a danger and it will cause more harm if we move away from it and shaming people for even bringing up factual information, say, when we propose you know, solutions that are rational, that are even proven to be a, a factual success. We are shamed into a corner as wanting to promote drug use and things like that. And that's where I think Help Not Handcuffs has a different, <laughs> you know, there's all these different groups with different approaches mm -hmm. and the Coalition for Medical Marijuana is one of them showing the medical benefits. We're actually recovery oriented. So, you know, there's other groups as well that just say, hey, you should have a right to be able to use marijuana. And I think they have some very valid points. Mm -hmm. That's not our point. We don't promote drug use, alcohol use on a Sunday, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But we recognize that the harm you're doing to the population that actually needs help. And so when these all these different voices come into chorus, I think you start to put down those th that fear and that shame and you bring about a fact-based conversation. 
Yes, and uh, I think there was a newspaper article just today that said that New Jersey has triple the amount of uh, heroin deaths uh, than the national average. So, you know, what we're doing is not only wrong, but it's very, very harmful to our, to our society. Um, and now harm reduction techniques, I was very involved with uh, the early uh, needle exchange programs uh, in, in New Jersey. I was a very early advocate for that, uh, even before I started with my medical marijuana advocacy. So uh, are you involved with the needle exchange programs as part of a harm reduction approach for people with substance use disorders? Well, we certainly support uh, a range of harm reduction measures, and needle exchange being one of them. Uh, I'm out of Asbury Park, and Asbury Park is actually the last municipality in the state authorized to have a needle exchange program, mm -hmm. which is not yet activated. So we are having those discussions like we've mm -hmm. had with, uh, you know, our whole policy platform with our municipal leaders, and we're hoping that, you know, it will come into alignment where there's a provider willing, the city council has to pass a resolution as per the, uh, the law to enact the, harm, the, uh, the needle exchange program. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping those pieces will come into effect because really we... Uh, so you, you, Asbury Park was authorized to have a needle exchange yes. program and it just never came about? Never came about. How about yeah. that? Yeah, I know. So I think it's active in three or four cities in, in New Jersey, the needle exchange programs. And, and the Department of Health has glowing results from them. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the analysis of needle exchange programs are consistent with the national and the international uh, uh, results of needle exchange programs, which show that it reduces uh, 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 the spread of HIV by up to a third in, an, in, a, in a needle exchange in, in an IV drug using population, and it does not encourage more drug use or more drug users. So, you know, the, what motivates people to use IV drugs is not the availability of a needle. It uh, it's far, goes far deeper than that, Randy. Mm -hmm. So, um, at any rate, uh, uh, it, it's surprising that there still is resistance, that Asbury Park still, after all these years, cannot, cannot get you know, its needle exchange program. There's no needle exchange program in Trenton or the 500 other municipalities or so in New right. Jersey, except for those uh, few pilot programs. So and on the backdrop of what law enforcement is saying is a heroin epidemic, what you just cited of yeah. rising drug overdose deaths, how can we not be promoting these back right. base outcome-based uh, programs. What I'm most interested in right now, Randy, is the, uh, the resolution that you, that you drafted this resolution that uh, Asbury Park adopted in, uh, July, uh, on July 8th, 2015 at a council meeting and I was there and it was very exciting being there. I must say, Randy, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. It was great to have you there too. Well, you brought an excellent voice and a point of view and expertise that was definitely needed to that conversation. Well, thank, thank you, Randy. But, but that resolution, I mean, I, I was so impressed with that resolution that, uh, did you draft it yourself or how did it come about? No, so Help Not Handcuffs is a supporting member of New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform. Okay. And again, you know, our group doesn't promote drug use, but we recognize the harm of prohibition, so we're mm -hmm. factually supported. We'll support up to regulation and legalization of a substance. And, you know, we have all these models now. Colorado is charged ahead as the leader, Washington, Alaska, Washington, D.C. And we're seeing that they're not making these arrests. They're not harming people that have done no harm to personal property. They're not wasting resources when they could be used for other things. So that's where we come on board and say, you know, this is something we could definitely get behind. And so mm -hmm. we were supportive of New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform. They came out with a sample resolution Mm -hmm. So some basic facts that you had already mentioned about the 21,000 arrests in New Jersey. These are people who have done no other, no crime whatsoever except for mm -hmm. having a petty amount of marijuana. And why are we putting ourselves through this grind that really avails us nothing except for engendering a disability of these people now, they'll have a hard time. You know, the, the penalties are just so out of proportion to the, to the, har to the harms that are associated with, with marijuana use that, it, that it's just inappropriate. And um, and he made some, I mean, it just really you pointed out some very good things that, um, you know, this, the state spends a, a billion dollars in the last decade on enforcement. We have spent a billion of our tax dollars in the last 10 years on enforcement of marijuana possession arrests. And that every 24 minutes, someone in, in New Jersey is arrested for, for, for marijuana possession. You know, the, um, the, it's the, the harms that are, are associated with, um, with prohibition are, are just uh, incredible. And, uh, and we're starting to get re support from this new organization, New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform, which has 
uh, one of its members is uh, was it John Henry Barr from the yes. uh, from the New Jersey Municipal Prosecutors Association, uh, who, who gave very compelling testimony at, at the uh, Asbury Park Council meeting in July. Uh, you know, he, he spoke about how how the resources of the prosecutors mm -hmm. and the police are, are just just wasted and just so many absorbed and taken away from serious crime yeah. uh, by by focusing so many resources on marijuana arrests. And that was certainly the case in Asbury Park, where you know it's a <clears throat> a rejuvenating city. It's it's on the comeback. Mm -hmm. You know, it's now a thriving short town. It had been a, a burnt out shell of its former self for so many years, yeah. but now it's coming back. But there's still a lot of those entrenched issues, and that takes a lot of attention, a lot of time, and to have our police, you know, our police force, the arrest for marijuana, petty possession of marijuana, we're right around ten percent. And you know, Asbury Park has a forty million dollar municipal budget. The police department's the largest consumer of that, with almost ten million dollars, and mm. ten percent of their arrests are for, you know, close to marijuana, uh, petty possession. So why are we doing that when there there are a serious issues like a million dollars a year, yeah, just in Asbury Park. Being it spent it, it almost it, yeah. it forces you to conclude that it mm. costs almost that much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and the impact on minorities. I mean, uh, the ACLU New, of New Jersey, which is also a part of the New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform. You know, they came out with a very important study that showed that uh, people of color are three times more likely than Caucasians to be arrested for marijuana. You know, so despite using it, the same rate. right? Despite the same rate of use. So you know, there's there's certainly a, some type of uh, institutional racism or classism that that is involved in these uh, in in these laws. It's it's so important that 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 everyone get to recognize this, that cities and uh, counties and states and, and, and un until our nation finally realizes that, that what we're doing right now is the wrong approach in many, many sure. different ways. Well, the war on drugs, one of the hallmarks is the separation of families and the racial disparities you're talking yeah. about. One in 10 African Americans has a parent in jail. Yeah. I mean, separating families right there with the number of arrests for marijuana, that certainly reinforces that. Mm -hmm. Migrant populations, migrants who have, you know, built this country, um, if they have legal permanent resident status, if they get caught with marijuana, there's a one-time exception. If they happen to make the same mistake twice, they can lose their legal permanent resident status. It can mm. make them deportable. Mm -hmm. And someone who's here garnering, trying to earn that LPR status, they mm -hmm. can get deported right away mm. for a petty possession arrest. So again, separating families. Yeah. And you know, that really, it really destroys the nuclear family, which has a devastating effect on the inner cities like Asbury Park and Trenton and sure. Newark and Camden. You know, you take the parents away from the children, and what do you do? You just, you just guarantee that this, this problem is going to continue for generations to come, quite frankly, because, you know, the, the children are, uh, don't have the parental guidance, they don't have the parental resources to help them out when they get in trouble. They've been orphaned. And they're so orphaned. Speak. Yeah, they're orphaned. So, and, um, and, the, and what happens when they go to prison? You know, during this tremendous prison expansion, the very first thing to be uh, discarded was rehabilitation efforts. You know, everything was going into custody and control, all the resources. You know, we're building new state prisons, we're, you know, we're beefing up our, our staff and we're, you know, training the staff and, and equipping them. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the New Jersey Department of Corrections is a very professional organization. It's one of the, one of the best DOCs in the country. Um, you know, but but we pay for that too. Sure. You know, and and uh, and what we pay for is uh, you know could be going to other areas, could be going to prevention, it could be going to education, it could be going to um, to everything. You know, they say if we ended the war on drugs, we would have one third more resources to add for every other you know element of our of our society, uh, education and transportation and infrastructure repair. It's uh, such a such a waste, and nationally, I see we're arresting eight hundred thousand marijuana possession arrests each year, um, and yet one hundred eleven million Americans have tried marijuana, and more than thirty million Americans use marijuana each year. You know, this is you know part of the reality of of what the situation is here in America. You know, uh, you're going to arrest your way out of this problem. You know, <laughs> thirty million Americans using it every year, a hundred million Americans using it. You know, it. It's uh, stunning figures, you know, when, sure. when, when you look at it. Well, we come to a point where, again, we have our biggest leaders, Governor Christie saying the war on drugs is a failure, Pre President Obama saying the same thing. But again, we're not moving to away from the war on drugs, which actually is drug prohibition. That's the mm -hmm. war on drugs. Mm -hmm. And that, that's having a militaristic reaction 
you know, yeah. a violent reaction towards people <laughs> using these substances and criminalizing sure. the people who partake in that. But, um, you know, pointing that out now is starting to get a lot easier and pointing out, you know, the ironies in it that, you know, like you're saying, everybody's using it. it you know, prohibition has failed not just in stopping people using the drugs, it's also empowered the people that you least want to have control of it. You know, cartels, gangs, and mm -hmm. every other person who mm -hmm. makes a poor choice to say, I'm gonna make some extra money doing this. But those first two, cartels and gangs, you know, the war on drugs was supposed to protect us from drugs. It was supposed mm -hmm. to help the ailing. You know, those were the, the big talking points. And instead, we're empowering these groups that will target our kids, they, they control their turf by violence, and you know, look at what we did with alcohol prohibition. You know, we, we empowered, a, you know, an alcohol <coughs> cartel, but we don't see them shooting it out for alcohol anymore right. on the streets of uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. But what are they shooting it out over? Yeah. The pro prohibited sure. substances. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I grew up in the city of Trenton and I live there uh, now. And uh, I, I've seen the difference, you know, in, in after, after se several decades of the war on drugs, uh, drugs are more available than ever, they're cheaper, they're stronger, uh, and the violence that's associated with the war on drugs is just escalated tremendously. Um, you're absolutely right about the militarism, uh, you know, the militaristic, it's not just a law enforcement, it really is a military uh, episode, it's, and that, you see that you know, uh, strongly in, in our international relations, you know, how we've exported our war on drugs to Colombia and Mexico and, you Absolutely. know, using the Coast Guard to, uh, to intercept drugs, uh, drugs, you know, it's, uh, and, and now we're, we're giving all this excess military equipment to the police forces, so we're really militarizing our police forces. Yeah, very concerning. Um, and, you know, uh, military, you know, the Posse Comitatus Act is, the military is not supposed to be engaged in uh, civilian law enforcement, and yet, and yet we we're, we're forcing the military to become involved in that. It's uh, it's very very dangerous what we're doing, and a very dangerous uh, uh, trend that we're we're following. And, and I'm glad that that you're speaking out against it, uh, and, and so effectively. You know, th this this resolution is just just I think it's brilliant, quite frankly. You know, insofar as it. it easily and quickly sums up so many different issues about the, uh, about the failure of the war on drugs and the benefits of, uh, of marijuana legalization uh, that uh, I, I, I really have been urging many people to go to their 555 other communities mm -hmm. in, in the state of New Jersey and, and, and bring this to the attention of their, uh, their elected officials and bring this sample resolution, customize should. it for for Trenton, for Camden, for you know every other city that uh, um, at least would start a dialogue, right, Randy? To sure, uh, to with the elected officials, right? I mean, in Asbury Park, you know, mm -hmm. we had just had a, a change in go government, which triggered a new election. So we had a new municipal election, and we had uh, a few of our council members that were previously elected stayed on board, and a couple new members. So election night, I knew what our platform was. We already had that. I you know. I got in touch the very next day with all five council members and just said, look, congratulations. You know, I know you've got your priorities that you kind of enumerated during the campaign. I just want to let you know what we're working on, and these are our priorities. And one of them was this sample resolution. Mm -hmm. And some of them said, you know, well, I need to learn more about it. I'm not sure where I am. Some of them were like, I support it outright, but let's see where my team members are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that was November. And then we just kind of kept having conversation. It didn't happen overnight. But as you make the rounds, as you make it a point to persistently, you know, respectfully be persistent, go around, and it's worth talking to the chief of police, too, mm -hmm. because, believe me, they know. They're, they're under pressure to reduce crime, reduce violent crime, and they see that, uh, you know, a lot of their resources are being tied up. Now, whether or not any particular police chief will come out in support or against, I don't know, but it's worth making that round. Mm -hmm. making that stop and having yeah. that conversation. Yeah, I read where the Asbury Park uh, police chief, uh, he took a neutral stance, yes. you know, which was very good. I mean, you just say, look, you guys make the laws and we'll enforce what you tell us to enforce, which, you know, is exactly the way it should be, you know, and unfortunately it's not always that way in, in other communities uh, where the police, you know, are, are heavily invested in this war on drugs and they, they, uh, they are actively opposed to any type of reform. 
but you know, to be, to be neutral, I think is 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 what we what we should expect and and the best we can expect from the police, which mm -hmm. was exactly what happened in Asbury Park. Yes. So so that that was great too. Sure. It, again, on the ironies of our policy now, I, I you know. It, it's also worth it to point out that police have a very difficult job, particularly now. There's a lot of issues going on sure. the nation's talking about, but that's a job where you can go to work and expect to possibly have a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you advocate the benefits of medical marijuana, sometimes PTSD is very effectively treated with marijuana. Right. And imagine if you have a job where mm -hmm. you could go in and be violently traumatized and expect to show up reasonably soon after for work and, mm -hmm. you know, be healthy and mm -hmm. appropriate to perform your duties, but you actually can't take the medicine because if you were to take that, then you're right. a criminal. You would certainly yeah. lose your job. Right. You would be on the opposite end of that. Meanwhile, the irony is they'll, it's okay to you know, consume alcohol to the point of alcoholism right. almost. You know, right. I mean, what is the message sent yeah. to our law enforcement, to yeah. <laughs> our, 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 our broader community, that mm -hmm. it's okay to go overboard here as long as you mm -hmm. don't harm person or property, but it, should you touch this, you become a criminal now. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, certainly alcohol, you know, is certainly a potential problem for law enforcement officers, uh, especially given the, the, the stressful nature of the position and the, you know, uh, the need to relax and unwind and try to forget some of that. Uh, the problem is that with alcohol, it really exacerbates many of the symptoms of PTSD. Uh, whereas marijuana has been shown to actually alleviate or ameliorate many of the symptoms of PTSD. It helps them forget the traumatic events uh, and, uh, <laughs> and there's no hangover the next day. New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform did a great job in, in drafting, in making a template resolution. Mm -hmm. Really where we came in was just liaising the issue mm -hmm. on a very uh, customized level, saying, hey, you know, I'm a member of your community in Asbury Park. This is why I'm concerned of it. Yeah, you know, I presented it just like that, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm also, you know, the campaign organizer for Help Not Handcuffs. This is how you can start moving the goal line, so to speak, towards the point where we want to be at and calling on other elected officials to do the same and achieving all these goals. So all the stats were really kind of lined up right there. Yeah. Really what it was was just being the link, just saying this is why it matters to Asbury Park. This is why you mm -hmm. are in your right mm -hmm. to speak up on this issue. Well, I spoke with New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform. They gave you all the credit, quite frankly. They said they were only they were only involved in a very small oh, part. Oh, very nice of them. <laughs> so, uh, just to let you know. But some of the benefits of, of regulation you also point out in this uh, resolution, you know, that that you know we're not doing a good job of keeping this away from kids. Uh, right. For the last thirty years in a row, the Monitoring the Future survey showed that over eighty percent of high school seniors say marijuana is easy to get or fairly easy to get. Uh, and it's it's easier for them to get marijuana than beer. Yeah. So you know to 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 put it in a regulated system where it's only available to adults through licensed stores where you know they would they would uh, uh, check IDs. You know you, you really would do a far better job of keeping this away in, from uh, the inappropriate use by uh, teens and young children than we're doing now. Absolutely. Yeah. The National Center for Addiction and Substance Abuse also had another statistic. Uh, in their high time, high school report, I'm sorry, they said one in four kids is able to get marijuana so easily that they often get it by text and they get it within 45 minutes. <laughs> that beats pizza delivery, text, yeah. in, in Asbury Park at least. Yeah. And if, you, know, other, you know, there's other benefits, uh, benefits so that, that now we will know what we're getting, you know, that the marijuana will be tested for, for cannabinoid content, it'll be tested for purity, it'll be tested, it could be organically grown if that's important to people. Um, you know, it's, uh, the, there are just so many benefits to, to legalization and, and regulation and a, and, a, and, a, and a formalized, regulated approach uh, that uh, it's, 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 it's not surprising, I think, that, that the, uh, the polls are going uh, sure. uh, greater and greater in support of this. Regulated markets is starting to almost come into clarity. You're, mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of actors, not just on marijuana, but you're seeing um, just in these past months, the Drug Enforcement Aid Administration, as well as the state's medical examiner, uh, both attributed the unregulated heroin as a reason why so many people are overdosing. Mm -hmm. Two different subjects, sure. two different substances, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. such a danger yeah. when you're buying something and you don't know what's in it, and you have mm -hmm. an actor who, who knows what their intentions are, who knows 
what they want to achieve through that sale. Mm -hmm. Again, someone could go out and buy marijuana and that could be laced with anything. You don't know. Right. And like you're saying, right. when you bring it behind a, a <laughs> licensed store owner who has right. to follow the rules. Right. You know, and then this is why the, the dangers of synthetic marijuana, what they call synthetic marijuana, which isn't marijuana at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. Uh, uh, just um, you know, it's a, a chemical concoction that's sprayed on weed, and people use it in place of marijuana because they, it doesn't show up in a drug test. But the resolution, finally, uh, what it says is that uh, the, the city supports fair and effective criminal justice and drug policies, and you urge the state and legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to regulate tax and and, and um, uh, legalize marijuana. So, you know, the, there's not, no change really going on in Asbury Park right now. The resolution is just urging the, the urging this law to, be, yeah. to become law uh, in, in New Jersey. It's ceremonial. Yeah. You know, it would have been great if we had the power to do that. Yeah. At this point, we don't see a path for that, but except for the state or federal change. And so, yeah. you know, the, they voted unanimously on this. Yeah. Uh, the mayor, deputy mayor and council, they sounded off on it, and they were well within their rights to. They, they yeah. looked at fact-based information, and they heard from experts like yourselves, the Small Prosecutors Association. You know, they heard from New Jersey United for Marijuana Reform, and of course, Help Not Handcuffs. And mm -hmm. and that's the way it should go. That decision makers are there to hear of an issue, hear of the facts supporting it, and if it's a fact-based, rational policy, they should act, mm -hmm. and they should act quickly. That's and that's what Asbury Park did. Right. And I hope other municipalities yeah. follow their lead. And, and many people uh, also from Asbury Park testified too. They, you know, they were there for other reasons, and they said, "Oh, by the way, I support that." Too. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so thank you so much for coming and explaining about what you're doing, Randy, to uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, help not handcuffs and the resolution. And uh, thank you so much for thanks for having to, me for coming Great to be to here. See them in JTV. For more information about the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey, join us at our free public meetings on the second Tuesday of every month at the Lawrence Township Library in Mercer County, New Jersey, from 7 to 9 p.m. Snacks are served and all are welcome. Remember, every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana, Lefty. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for cannabis. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Cada 42 segundo, está uno arrestado por marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for... Every 42 seconds, someone in this country is arrested for marijuana. Shot kind of disagree with you, I don't know for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. <laughs> Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. It could be you.